Good morning, guys. Uh, this is going to be a pretty lengthy video about fuel tuning this morning. And there's going to be a lot of parts of this video that some people that you've heard of, some people that you haven't heard of, are going to completely disagree with me. And I really don't care because all the research that we've done over the last 20 years has led us to this point to give us these conclusions. And to be honest with you, I don't feel like there's a better way to do things. This will apply to almost every engine combination out there. Um, and this only applies to wide open throttle situations, uh, making peak power, making all the power the engine combination will make. So anyway, just follow right along with me here. There's going to be a lot of people that you see um, that are going to tell you that lean is mean. And in fact, it is mean. It's really mean. It will burn your pistons. It'll take the ends off your spark plugs. It'll torch ruts in your heads. It'll knock your head gaskets out. Um, and the right lean combination with too much timing will bend the fucking rods. It's pretty mean. Uh, it will destroy everything in its path, uh, given the right scenario to do so. Uh, so lean is mean. Um, another thing that I will like to say, there's a lot of people out there to say, don't look at your, don't look at your O2 AFR readings. All right, you need to get out there and read your spark plugs. Well, in my personal opinion, there's about three people on the planet that actually know how to correctly read spark plugs. So unless one of those three people are with you, uh, chances are you're no better off than if you just looked at the O2 sensor. In fact, you may be going in the wrong direction uh, all the way around. So in my personal opinion, if you have not been reading spark plugs for 10 or 15 years, don't even look at the fucking spark plugs, okay? Uh, just rely on the O2 sensor and hopefully it does not fail you before you get the engine tuned in enough where you can uh, know that it's, it's good to go. But anyway, so, all right. So this morning I want to talk about fuel tuning, and I want to start start with the different types of fuel. We have uh, regular 93 octane pump gas, uh, followed by E85, followed by any type of race gas, followed by methanol. We'll just call it M1. Now, a lot of people idiots I will say when you start talking about we're gonna put oh, I'm just gonna put race gas in my daily driver or whatever and they'll be like oh man race gas got so much power and probably gonna blow the damn spark plugs out of it or bend the rods absolutely not true uh, starting right here and going this way 93 has the most power per gram of any of these fuels this has the least that's why it takes twice as much of this to make the same power as this. This has almost half the potential energy stored in it as 93 does. Race gas has less potential energy than 93 does. E85 has less potential energy per gram than 93 does. That's what makes it less volatile. That's what gives it the, the properties to withstand uh, cylinder pressures and heat and not pre-ignite. That's the only reason we run these well, M1 has some other advantages, but but in, in general, the reason we run higher octane fuels is just to keep pre-detonation out of the equation. Uh, and that's really, the if this would not detonate or spark knock at, at the horsepower levels we run M1 at, let's just go to the pump. But that's not gonna be the case. Um, 93 octane gives up somewhere around two horsepower per cubic inch. It will. Uh, it starts becoming very, very volatile, and you must move on to something different. Anyway, now my theory, well, I shouldn't call it a theory. It's been tested and tested and tested and tested, and we know it to be true. Um, but my theory is that the more fuel, more fuel we can give an engine equals more power. And the reason of that is because all the potential energy of the mixture that's inside the cylinder comes from the fuel. Now we do have to find a way to mix the oxygen with it and then we do have to find a way to light it. And there does come a point where you're adding fuel, adding fuel, adding fuel, car slowing down because anytime you add fuel, the fire in the cylinder burns slower. So in order to get that fire lit and burn completely, we must add timing. So the first step 
when you add fuel is if the car slows down, add timing. Now there's going to come a point where we start shutting the fire out all the way around and if you have a really good ignition system and you're still shutting the fire out by adding fuel, then stop. Uh, it's not going to make any more power after that. However, if you add a little fuel, car slows down, you add some time and it comes back and does a little bit better, then continue on this route. A lot of people will start with whatever time and Joe down the street told them to run and and it was probably too low of timing because Joe was burning some shit up and that's the only way he could keep from burning his car up. So they put that timing in and then they make a pass and the car's not as fast as they think it should be. So then they put timing in, they don't add any fuel, the car picks up a little bit, they put timing in, put timing in, then they hurt stuff. Or they start out with too low of ignition timing and as they pull fuel out, the car gets faster and faster and faster. And they think it's because they lean the car up because lean is mean and that's not the case. It did not have enough ignition timing in it to begin with. So anyway, this is kind of my rundown about fuel tuning. Um, I really think that you need as much fuel in the chamber as you can possibly get without completely shutting the fire out as long as you have a really good ignition system. Uh, MSD has come out with some new stuff, uh, the CDI stuff, and then of course we've had the uh, smart coals around for a long time. Uh, I like those. Um, but either way, in my personal opinion, the lean is mean thing is bullshit. Uh, the more fuel that you can give a motor, the faster it can make because all the potential energy is stored in the fuel. It's not stored in the air. So either way, go out there and have a good time, guys. Uh, if you have any questions about this or you have any comments, please leave them below, and I'll be glad to answer them and get back to them. There's a lot of stuff that I left out this morning, but this is just kind of a basic rundown. If you have any more in-depth questions, I'll be glad to answer them for you. But either way, have a great day. Have a great weekend. We'll see you.